Welcome to this XBL Best Practice Board Knowledge Series webinar, XBL Building Blocks, in a little more detail, presented by Eric Cohen. In the first part of this webinar series, What is XBL?, you are introduced briefly to some terms that are key to understanding XBL today. While sometime in the not too distant future, XBL may be as transparent as the infrastructure that lets you plug in your computer or get a dial tone on a landline telephone, for now it's helpful to know the basics of XBRL. Instance documents for holding the organizational data, the taxonomies that provide the context to understand that organizational data, extensibility, the unique propositions of XBRL for first creating and then customizing the taxonomies. Finally, we'll discuss how all these things work together to help streamline and integrate the business reporting supply chain. XBRL is about expressing the data and assertions of business reporting for commercial organizations, government entities, not-for-profits, and anyone else doing business. If business data, whether the standardized version of a company's financial statement or their internal detailed ERP data or corporate responsibility content, that content is primar primarily represented by the instance document. I say primarily because some of the report or data batch specific information may appear in some of the additional types of XBRL files that we'll discuss shortly. Just as some company reports and data is used only internally or shared with the regulator for simple compliance, and some of those reports are made public and some aren't, the same is true about XBRL instances. At the time of this recording, for example, there are approximately 49,000 instance documents and their related files provided by 9,000 companies filing in U.S. GAAP with the SEC of the United States. Now, bank reports are likewise available for download from the U.S. banking regulators. There are many other regulators around the world, including the Superintendencia de Valores y Seguros, the SVS de Chile, the Magna System of the Israel Securities Authority, and the Financial Services Agency of Japan's Edinet that also provide reporting information in both legacy and XBRL formats. Now, that's just a small selection. There are many more. And this isn't limited to national mandates. Voluntary programs such as the Global Reporting Initiatives Program join the mandates in a wide variety of XBRL instances being made available publicly, as well as millions and tens of millions that are only used within a single organization, in a closed information supply chain, or in filing with the regulators such as HM Revenue and Customs in the UK. An instance document represents business reporting facts using the Extensible Markup Language, or XML, a language created by the World Wide Web Consortium to provide the best of content, that's the stuff you need to report, with the best of context, the things that help explain what's being reported in a machine-consistent fashion, all this independent of a single fixed presentation. By adding metadata, that's the hidden information about information, uh, you often hear that referred to as tags. Organizations that publish their content in an instance document both provide formalized meaning to each fact they report, as well as a consistent way to provide the context to each of those facts, such as when did it take place or what are the relevant units of measure. By standardizing the way that business reporting numbers, pieces, and blocks of text, dates, web addresses, and all other additional necessary qualitative and quantitative reporting content are expressed, the processes of assembling, combining, preparing, publishing, finding, accessing, and consuming the data can potentially be improved. So an instance document is that set of factual information. An instance document can be a single fact. It can be a, an entire traditional business report, like a customer master file or a financial statement. It can even be an amalgamation of information from many sources. Now, each of those facts is associated with certain contextual information to help in interpreting it. That includes pointers to the reporting organization, the time period of the reported fact, and certain reporting breakdowns, such as the reporting segment or reporting scenario. Numeric facts are associated with an explicit unit of measure, so you know whether something's in feet or meters, in US dollars or Australian dollars, or any other combination. 
as a printed traditional report may have a cross-reference from a fact to the bottom of the page, uh, a footnote, or to the end of the document, an end note if we use word processing terms. XRail also provides a special way to associate that additional text or cross-reference resource with one or more facts. In financial reporting, the word footnotes has uh, two very distinct meanings. Uh, the notes to the financial statement and that page or end specific notes that I just mentioned that often associated with a superscripted reference, such as the number one uh, that you might see uh, in superscript right here. Uh, we're referring here to that latter case, the superscripted type of text, and Xperial stores that in instance documents. Now, instances also contain some other necessary technical data and point to the relevant taxonomies, which we're going to talk about now. So we are led to the taxonomies, and this is a, a different beast where the primary role of the instance document stores the primary, primary organization and specific report facts. A taxonomy is made to be more generic, more reusable, something to capture the formal definition, description, and interrelationships of the business reporting terms. Just as a word may have many different meanings, uh, for example, in the English language, I'm told the word set has the most distinct meanings. Business reporting terms may have similar words, or similar sounds, but have different meanings in different environments. Uh, in the business report, what's a table? Is that something with rows and columns? Uh, is it something that has four legs and you put things on? Uh, what is cash? Is it something that you have around to spend or something you're responsible to hold on on others' behalf? Different taxonomies can differentiate the terms, different and the same, that are used by different authorities, regions, and industries. Now, that word taxonomy, depending on your background, may have some very uh, explicit and, and preconceived meanings. Uh, the term has different meanings based on their application. And Xperial taxonomy is more complex and powerful than most technologists assume. It leverages the XML recommendation called XML schema. It uses a little file called .xsd to hold the newly defined terms and establish presentation groupings. Uh, XBureau uses another XML recommendation to create something called link bases. And these are structures that start with those terms that were defined in the XML schema and capture interrelationships between them as well as assigning resources to them. To meet the needs of different authorities, regions, and industries, taxonomies are being developed using the XBureau specification by different groups for different purposes and with different degrees of authority. The group's primarily responsible for financial reporting in the U.S. and internationally. The Financial Accounting Standards Board and the International Financial Reporting Standards Foundation, the ISB, have developed the U.S. GAAP and IFRS taxonomies. Now, on the other hand, Xperial's Global Ledger Taxonomy Framework, or Xperial GL, that represents the detailed data within ERP systems from first transaction to end report, has been developed collaboratively within Xperial International. Vendors create their own taxonomies. Companies and others can develop taxonomies for their own internal use. The U.S. GAAP taxonomy and IFRS taxonomy, amongst others, are freely available, as are many others as detailed as the Xperial International website. Others are more limited in their circulation. Some taxonomies are designed to be used on their own. Others, such as IFRS, can be used on its own, but has been designed to be incorporated into other taxonomies as well. Some taxonomies come on the basis of a regulatory mandate and have regulatory support. Others are just simply useful tools in a particular supply chain, whether internal or external, to exchange information with greater shared understanding. Link bases provide formalization of a set of reporting concepts and permit taxonomy developers and those who use those taxonomies later to communicate more clearly the meaning and interrelationships of the reporting concepts. The presentation link base, as our starting point, permits the communication of one or more hierarchies of the agreed upon concepts, the order, the indentation, and if one or more of a wide variety of choices of textual captions from a library of captions should be used at different points along the presentation. The calculation link base permits communication of a simple weighted summation of children to their numeric parent. It's amazed it's amazing how many published reports don't add up today in the printed form, but this expression of mathematical relationships 
can help draw attention to that situation and has. The definition link base is for abstract relationships. It's of special use when you need to bring together multiple dimensions of description to describe a fact, such as it is an income line item, but it is for the Asian uh, geography and industrial customer type instead of just a single line item. Now, there's a number of other relationships also possible with the definition link base. Now, along with the interrelationships, there's blocks of text and similar content as well. The label link base lets you provide alternative captions and sets of definitional content, sometimes called documentation, for each of the concepts defined in the taxonomy. The reference link base lets you cross-reference those business concepts to authoritative material, such as the FASB codification and other practical guidance. Link bases are used for additional functionality, such as Expert formula, for more powerful tests, assertion checks, and creation of new content from existing content. There are a wide number of taxonomies. There's a list at Experial International's website. Uh, there's a project listing area. There's a listing of taxonomies that have gone through a formal taxonomy recognition process. In addition, Experial GL is also found at the Experial International site. However, the US GAP taxonomy found at the FASB's website, the IFRS taxonomy at ifrs.org, the Global Reporting Initiatives taxonomy for G3 and G31 reporting at the GRI site, they're amongst the many taxonomies that may be relevant in your reporting environment. So I've described instances, that's the organizational data, the taxonomies, the agreement on the terms and their interrelationships that provides the context for the facts and the instances. And I've told you where you might find some examples. But what does Experial actually look like? On the next few slides, I'm going to show you some examples, uh, first of pure Experial, something that's not optimized for people, but designed for computer consumption, something that comes from a public filing. Uh, believe me, it won't be pretty. I'll show you some rendered Experial, or really just some HTML that was based on Experial content. Uh, it really has no Experial left to it, but it may leverage some functionality because of Experial. And finally, something called inline Experial, an emerging format that's been developed as certain fixed presentation requirements have been developed. So here is some pure Experial. Now, you may know that if you open a web page in a text editor rather than a web browser, you'll see a lot of strange codes instead of nicely formatted content, colors, and graphics. In the same way, Experial is just machine consistent text representing the business content. Here you may be able to make out some reporting facts down there towards the bottom where it says facts, contributions, revenue from interest. Moving up a little bit and a little arrow between them, you'll see that there's a unit of measure that's formalized. In this case, contributions are expressed with a cross-reference called sterling, but that points to a unit of measure that says that they're expressed in UK pounds, as defined by the International Organization for Standardization, or the ISO in their standard ISO 4217. Now, numeric facts also have an indication of how trustworthy the number is. Say it's accurate to the nearest thousandth. And the context towards the top are associated by yet another cross-reference to its associated fact to show the reporting period and other segmental breakdowns. The goal here is not for us to read it. It's for consistency for machines, which you can then present however you or any other consumer may wish. Here is one way that you may want to present it. Now, rendered reporting is generally no longer really Experial. In fact, a single Experial instance can be turned into lots of different reports. Some reports, like this one, look no different than the legacy report. But others, such as the rendering that comes from the US SEC viewer, permits access to the additional Experial content, such as the concepts documentation and other definitional information. Now here's something called inline Experial, that emerging format that starts off with a fixed presentation format, such as the one that's on the prior page, but then adds Experial-oriented metadata stuff behind the scenes, as you can see in that little call out in the middle of the screen, so that the information producer can have their presentation and Experial content intertwined. And that's really helpful for review. And the consumer can extract the Experial for the inline Experial where necessary. The HMRC environment that I mentioned before shows the flexibility of this format, which gives great flexibility in providing Experial data or not providing Experial metadata. It permits providing additional metadata in the hidden area that goes into the Experial but doesn't show, 
and many other loose relationships. Finally, the X of Xperial is extensibility. And extensibility at its core means that different people can develop taxonomies. But once you have an agreement such as the IFRS taxonomy, extensibility means that if your business reporting environment permits it, regions and industries and organizations and others can specialize a taxonomy for their own local needs, defining new concepts, indicating how they relate to the broader group, moving around presentation calculation and other relationships in the base to more explicitly and specifically express the specific reporter need, and creating new capabilities within the framework of XBRL. Simple extension is like building an extension on a house. There's minimal disruption to the existing concepts and interrelationships. But XBRL also provides the means of prohibiting original relationships and resources or providing different levels of priorities where the highest one wins. With these type of extensibilities, a local user of a taxonomy doesn't change the base taxonomy. It remains untouched. But the XBRL specification provides the guidance on how that base plus the extensions work together to best represent the final reporting concepts. In the United States, where XBRL got its start, companies needed flexibility to express their own reports, while having the shared U.S. GAAP taxonomy as the stake in the ground for comparability. Something as simple as calling accounts receivable trade receivables on your own report led to the ability to provide different captions than the base taxonomy. Other variations, whether the calculation or presentation or some other attribute of a report, could be explained with an indication of how the extension environment is different than the base taxonomy. In this way, a company could tell its own story without having to compromise and put its own story within the confines of a limited number of reporting buckets. Now, XRail is also about reusability, being able to add on and make changes while leveraging, for example, the IFRS taxonomy within the framework of a specific nation's reporting regime, such as the Australian SBR framework. Now, while the US SEC's reporting regime permits and even requires extensions, many reporting environments don't permit them. They're often using XBRL for fixed environments, such as templates or forms. But that end report is the tip of the iceberg, and companies may still be able to improve their own internal environment with a customized report for their own review process while delivering only the base to the regulator or another consumer. How does it all fit together? Well, we discussed the schema used to declare the base taxonomy. It might be extended by a regulator or group, such as Australian SBR. That might then be extended by a specific company. Captions, presentation relationships, calculations, and references may likewise be augmented, prohibited, or overridden. All that content is then used to provide the context for the facts expressed in the instance document representing the company data. All this is constrained by the XRL specification, may be further constrained by regulators or driven by other best practice guidance or taxonomy developer requirements. So for example, if you look at financial statement filing, the SEC system, you, in the, the Edgar system, you'll see the instance document representing the company report, the company's extension schema, which referenced the US GAAP taxonomy schema, and the company-specific label, presentation, calculation, and definition link bases. These are the primary building blocks of XBRL. You want to learn more. You can build on this content by taking advantage of the XBRL Foundation certification, and look to the XBRL International Conferences for additional detailed training opportunities.